Hey, welcome on in guys, Tobin here with you, and thanks for checking out the channel, Miami Heat, taking care of business in Mexico City, they beat up on the Washington Wizards, 118-98, and the most important thing uh, tonight is that you got a great, great, great performance from Bam Adebayo, a man who is been ha off to a very quiet offensive start some of it his own missing some of it being missing in the offense of anybody just even looking to get him the basketball today it was a Miami Heat game that was centered around their big man number 13 and he delivered in a big big way finishing with 32 points 14 rebounds and of course we got to see the three-point shot tonight I think two things that you like from Bam um offensively tonight he was not shy to shoot the three ball when the looks were there he ended up taking five attempts from downtown got right off to it in this performance uh got the heat off to a quick lead with his three ball and you know and then the other part of it was he uh he was he was dunking on Alex Sar's head like every chance that he got he was trying to give him those those welcome to the NBA rookie moments for the number two pick from Washington who by the way I will just say, very impressive player. I mean, my goodness. I think a lot of people took a dump on this uh, this draft class, and, and they were like, oh, yeah. And he ended up going to Washington because there was some weird workout stuff after uh, in the draft process. But, man, he was a good-looking player tonight. What was what was his final numbers? Uh, Sar, he started the game 17 points. Um I'm not going to get the whole box square because it was a, a well-rounded game all around from him. Yes, yeah, Sar finished tonight 17.6 rebounds, three assists, but four blocks, four blocks, and uh, was was very, very nice performance from the 19-year-old today. But, yeah, this was a game you could just see Miami was trying to make Bam a, a focal point of it. Uh, him and Jimmy both got off to quick starts. So, you know, where this has become a very guard centric offense, it, it's going to be interesting to see if this can balance out. And then Spo has talked about this with the whole too many weapons thing. And, you know, it, it definitely garnered some eye rolls, I think, from fans and media when he says that. But, you know, typically when Spo does put stuff out there like that, it is true. Like it takes a little bit of uh, of getting used to. And, you know, today was definitely more of a, hey, your stars are going to go eat. They're going to go get right. And they really imposed their will on this game. You know, this is a, a Wizards team that wants to get up and down. They want to play fast. They want to make things chaotic. And I think Bam and Jimmy just kind of had to get the ball, muscle this game away from them, get big time rebounds. Jimmy, very relentless on the boards today, getting putbacks, getting offensive rebounds. I think Jimmy tonight finished with, what was it, six? Yeah, six offensive rebounds tonight. So he was really relentless getting after it. Six of eight from the line. He finished with 18 points, eight rebounds overall. Um, so your two catalysts, your two, your two studs there, really went to work on this young Wizards team that, you know, look, has not been a, uh, you know, has not been an embarrassment thus far. In fact, they're coming off back-to-back -back wins against the Atlanta Hawks for their first Ws of the season. Uh, they did not play Kuzma tonight, so you have that in mind. But yeah, they, they I mean, they had a tough start to the year. They had to take on Boston. They had to take on Cleveland, two of the better teams in the Eastern Conference so far. They get a couple of wins against Atlanta. And you can see they got a lot of fun talent on this team. To be fair for Miami, like you can't chalk up any wins, uh, especially last year. But I will say it does feel like Miami... This was their best wire-to-wire -wire performance in a game so far this year. There was no let-up. There was no third quarter that you had to worry about. You know, Wizards, I think, ended up winning. Did they end up winning the... Nope, they uh, they did not. The Heat outscored them in the fourth, too. But that was like there was a point where they were making a little bit of a squeaker to, to, to make it respectable there in the fourth quarter. And uh, eventually Miami would put it away, mostly thanks to Alec Burks. Alec Burks today, what a performance from him. He uh, was, what, five of five of seven from downtown tonight for the man Tyler Hero dubs corner pocket. He uh, finished with 15 points, but uh, was an absolute sniper. His teammates looking for him all over the place. 
Uh, Jaime Jaquez Jr., of course, got the, uh, the, the hometown rub. His best basketball really came in the first quarter. He, we got to see that fancy footwork, the shot fake, getting the Mexican crowd, super excited. He then had the his best was uh, he put Kisper just in a spin move on the run and just going right to the cup. It looked real pretty. Put Miami up 14 at the time. And then he went right in the body of Jonas Valanciunas and got a tough bucket over him to keep the lead at 14. That was that was Hawkins' best run of the season. Adam Silver was in the booth with Eric Reed and John Crotty, and he was like, I'm a rock star here in Mexico. And there's like, all of a sudden, there's this fodder and this buzz now to possibly put a team in Mexico because we had all thought that, oh, the next team, that's going to be the... That's for sure going to be Seattle, and that's going to be Vegas, bar none. But, you know, look, Adam Silver does fancy this league to be very international. Um, With it having as many international stars as it does, it's hard to argue that. And and certainly, there's been some stories out there about the ratings kind of stinking up the joint so far this season. I personally haven't noticed, like, a lack of interest from Heat fans, even though knowing this could be a season where... I think the the feelings are on the brink uh, if things go awry. I, I think people are still loving this basketball team and still tuning in, still caring about what they're going to do. Um, at a game like tonight, I, I think the most important thing was was getting your best player uh, or one of your best players. Just just it, it, feeling like he is a, a big key of this offense again, that he's not out there just to do grunt work. And you can see what he's capable of. Like the guy... He's physically dominant. He's got a pretty shot. He was in his bag tonight, and uh, it was just a nice performance from Bam all around, uh, especially bullying a, a, a much younger player today. I think that that was, uh, that was exciting to see. Um, but Adam Silver was uh, – by the way, Adam, I don't need you to take pot shots at the D-Wade statue, dude. Everybody, You know, you're supposed to be a commissioner. Class it up a little, Adam Silver. I don't need you uh, with your sly little smiles making things. Are you really going to talk about the statue? Yeah, we are, actually. What do you want to say about it, dude? Just say it. So, Adam Silver was in there. Uh, Mostly commissioner talks, kind of bored to death. But it was cool to see that uh, Jaime Jaquez was getting his flowers. And, uh, you know, I was listening to Heat Weekly with Jose Pineda and Tommy Tig, And supposedly, like, he was getting like 50 plus media members to come see him. It was, uh, it must've been really, really cool for Jaime to get that. Um, on the international side of things also second quarter was cool because we got to see Pella Larson make his, uh, his first real contribution as a heat player. Now, mind you, this was a game where no Kevin love, no Duncan Robinson. So there was going to be some, somebody was going to squeak into that rotation but even with even with uh with Alec Burks getting the time that he did Pella got out there as well and uh yeah thought thought he thought he looks good just in the moments that he was out there he'd come again in the uh in the third quarter he did a three ball when ah oh, the dragon ah oh. ah oh, I love gogi Gogi's just voice, his presence just makes you happy. And when he was on the broadcast, mwah, tremendous. I'll get to some of his comments in a second, but Pella hit a three with him out there and uh and and looked really, really good. Did did get to see Kalel Ware as well, by the way. Kalel Ware came in and uh in mop up duty there late and got his first NBA points of the season. So congrats to Kalel Ware. Wish we could see you a little bit uh a little bit sooner. He uh it did feel like a thing. It's crazy watching this Thomas Bryant play. Like it feels like just he's either yelling at himself or there's a blooper or something crazy is happening. He's not playing terribly. Like he is giving all out balls to the wall effort. But of course, Heat fans are like sitting here, like, like, all right, well, when are we gonna get to it, huh? Let's get to it, dude. Let's let's get to the action. You know what? I, you know what we all mean. There was one where he gave up an and one to Jonas Valanciunas and like spiked the ball and it hit Valanciunas and then Valanciunas sho- gives him a little shove ski. So that was there. Um, 
fourth quarter mostly was the Bam Adebayo show when it mattered. Bam and Alec Burks. Alec Burks hitting threes. Bam getting dunks on Alex Sar. And then Pella Larson had this sick steal off the inbounds and a slam. He just, you know, has, has been the case since he has been in a Heat jersey. Just seems to be in the right, play, right place, right time to make big plays. So I'm not going to be... I don't know where the rotation spot is for him yet, but it's not going to be surprising if at some point Pella is going to be out here doing things for the Miami Heat in a big way. So we'll find out. But yeah, he was uh, he had his first three when Goran was on the broadcast, and Goran, uh, man, he was funny. I just he's he's such a charming dude, and he had a few things. He had a few he had a few good things on the broadcast today he was asked about playing in mexico city and uh he drops his line which i love which is always if i'm honest if i'm honest eric um he said if i'm honest i was out of shape playing in mexico because of the altitude so if there is going to be a team there do have to be wary of that i always think of um i always think of the mma fights that went on there and uh was it kane velasquez who petered out in mexico city to verdum I might be, I might, I might be missing, messing that one up. Goron then was asked about the 2020 finals from Eric. And he said, uh, I still have nightmares about it. Me too, dude. <sighs> so cruel. What happened to Goron and his foot in that series and bam, having to play with one arm. And then speaking of bam, you know, he was speaking about it, but he also did mention, he goes, but I do think that he needs to be more aggressive, like more. And that, and that was over the last couple of days, thinking about the cat game there were things that i was you know i know it was harsh after that game and and i think you know as a guy who's a big bam out bio fan i know what the dude is capable of and i don't doubt it some people i still get the same dumb arguments about people who doubt his role doubt his value i i, I just i'm like how many years do you guys gotta watch the team to realize stuff like i i just you know, some stuff just takes, I don't know, but it is true. Like some of it does have to be on him to just say, no, F this, this, when they'd say it's your team, man, it's your team. Take it by the, by the, you know, what's and, and go. And I think that's what Goron was referring to. And today he was very aggressive. He let it fly. He was hunting mismatches. He was just bullying and out physicaling younger players. I love that. I love seeing that more of that all this season because the last game, yes, while they were not getting him the ball enough, also demand the ball and also defensively just had a, a, a game where he was just not the same guy, not the same, not, not the guy we're used to seeing. So yeah, fascinating from that. And he was happy to see Jay rich on the floor and just profess his love for the Miami heat. And we love Goron. He's the best. He's the best. Um, couple of things of interest in the basketball world today. First off, the Cavaliers stay unbeaten. They are seven and O oh, game winner from Donovan Mitchell. The Bucks dropped to one and five and did it in a game where Damian Lillard scored 41 points and Giannis had 34 points, 16 rebounds, 9 assists. So you had two guys, one with a monster double-double and one with a near double-double, 41 points, 9 assists from Damian Lillard, and they dropped to 1-5 and five on the season. Bad situation there, man, because if you don't win that game, what games do you win? If you're the if you're the if you're the Bucks, that's that's a brutal brutal loss that they took, and then the Sixers, who still don't have Joel Embiid back, they dropped to one and four. They got spanked today by the Memphis Grizzlies, one twenty four one oh seven, and the big story out of this one is apparently Joel Embiid got into some physical altercation. He shoved a reporter. Some columnist had like referenced how his son was named after his deceased brother. It was a brutal column, to be fair, to Joel Embiid. Like, 
does it result in having to put your hands on somebody? I don't know. I don't know what the ramifications of that are going to be, but it was, it, it definitely like read that. I was like, ugh, that was too much, dude. Like, it, like this is what the guy wrote. Joel Embiid consistently points to the birth of his son, Arthur, as a major inflection point in his basketball career. He often says that he wants to leave a great, uh, to be great, to uh, leave a legacy for the boy named after his little brother who tragically died in an accident when Embiid was his first year with the 76ers. Well, in order to be great at your job, you first have to show up to work. And Embiid has been the opposite. Now in his 11th season, he's consistently has been poor conditioned. His poor conditioning has apparently seemed to have delayed the debut of his season. Yeah, dude, like... I just don't know why you gotta go. Like, this, you don't think just writing that. You're just like... You don't sit back at your laptop and you're like... I can make the same point without making this point, you know, like anybody can make the point that, yeah, obviously Joel Embiid's conditioning and his, his, um, availability has been an issue, but like, Jesus dude, really? Like that's, that's the place you go. That's like, after we just saw, you know, obviously what Jimmy Butler went through last year, you just see what these guys, like, dude, these guys are humans, man. Like I I don't know where this guy thought off uh, of being okay. Now, obviously, we'll see what ends up happening. Um, They said the league's going to investigate, but apparently some of the reports were like, Joel Embiid told this guy, like, you can say whatever you want to me as a player or about me sucking as a player, but, you know, keep my dead brother's name out of your mouth. Man brutal 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 night so that was uh that there's that going on any other scores that stand out tonight what's going on right now celtics win tonight they beat the hornets oh the other piece of drama that went on this in the raptors kings game which went to overtime apparently drake was like eyeballing demar Derozan, and tonight was vince carter night where they retired Vince Carter's jersey. And I got to make sure I'm not getting sentled, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Drake, uh, Drake had apparently said on the broadcast, let me see if I can get this. Drake had apparently said on the broadcast, if they retired DeMar DeRozan's jersey, that he's going to climb up to the rafters himself and tear it down. Woof. And then, uh, yeah, that's rough. Obviously, uh, obviously, he's still, he's, I guess, upset about him being in the Kendrick Lamar video. So, there's that. So, we had tonight, we had Joel Embiid versus a reporter. We had the Bucks losing a game where their two stars nearly go for 80 and we have DeMar DeRozan and Drake fun night fun night fun night in the NBA oh man did I miss anything else no I think that's about it of note Warriors are five and one they beat the uh, the Rockets as I do this but all in all um couple last he thoughts so yeah he got the win tonight and Bam was great. Jimmy, rock solid. Backcourt was all right. You know, nothing special. Nico struggled from the field tonight. So there was that. And then, um, yeah, I thought Pella looked good. Jaime, great start. Kind of a cold finish after that. But he did finish with a 8 and 10 rebounds, one assist. A lot on his shoulders. Great to see Jay Rich back out there tonight, even though he didn't make a bucket. The um, this is what I would say. So the Heat has three wins so far, and I would say it's fair to say those wins are probably against three of the worst teams in the Eastern Conference. So and their two losses are against you know two of the better teams. Now the Knicks game was very very close, very competitive. The Orlando game was not. Orlando's now in a spot where they're not going to palo for months. Um, but 
you know, you got coming in on Monday a Kings team that's obviously going to be coming off this emotional Drake beef that's going on. And I do think that this is an opportunity for Miami to kind of show, like, hey, all right, beat a real team. This team's obviously got all pro talent, all NBA talent, uh, all star talent. Be watching the Fox thing for sure. DeMar DeRozan always gives the heat fits. So very, very important game coming up on Monday. And it's the, it's the last home game for a while because after this one, Miami gets the Kings at home and then they are going on the road basically until I think the 20. Uh, yeah, they won't be back in their building until November 18th, which maybe will be Joel Embiid's debut. I mean, who knows when the hell he's going to make his debut. But the Heat are going to be on the road now for like the next two weeks after this one last home game. And they've stunk at home. I would really, really like it if the Miami Heat, it's going to be Olympian night. They're going to honor Bam. Bam's getting another banner. Nico is going to get honored before the game for getting his bronze medal. I don't believe he is getting a banner. But I would like, especially 8-15 time, by the way, different, different start time than normal. But I would like the Miami Heat to send their way into the road with um, – with uh, with uh, with giving the home fans a win, I, I think that I think it's important. I, they really have to reestablish a home court advantage, so that'll be something to definitely keep an eye on. And um, but all in all, today's game, first, second, and third is you know getting the win, but getting the win behind a monster game from Bam Adebayo. It was great to see from Bam.